Coach, so, you know, with kind of the playoff situation now, uh, you know, what's, what's kind of the biggest challenge on your end to keep, keep your players motivated, keep your players focused, to go out there and compete 100%? Well, I just hope that everybody that ever plays any sport uh, decides they want to be competitive people, and competitive people uh, play each and every game the same way regardless of what's on the line, because that game's on the line. And if you don't respect that, then you're not respecting the fact that uh, that's what our sport has to be able to do. And our football team right now has to be able to do is respect the fact that we have a game and we have the opportunity to win a game. And if you don't respect that, you're never going to be champions at some point anyway. Uh, did, it feel, did it feel this last Saturday that, uh, you know, again, you, you mentioned two weeks ago that you're two quarters away from having a completely different record. Did it feel like uh, this past Saturday, you guys had, you guys were in the situation to win the game, and it just kind of slipped through your fingers? I think the last three teams, the, the three teams that we played the last three games, Eastern Washington, Southern Utah, and Portland State, are the top three teams in the Big Sky. Could we have beaten them? What it should have could is a bad thing, you know. And it's the reality of the situation. It's the reality of where we are. Is that we had opportunities, and that makes it pretty frustrating. Is the opportunities that we had to. To beat all three of those teams, it definitely existed. And for whatever reason, in each of the three games, we did things that caused you to lose games. And I'm not too sure how much our opponent had to do with it. How do you think the team is prepared to play against Sacramento State, which seems like a pretty comparable team? Well, comparable. Every team in our conference is, is very comparable. I think we're proving that. If we're 2-6 and six and we lost 42-41 to 41 to the first place team in overtime, we lost 38-35 to 35 to the second place team, we've had 28 points given to an opponent the other day, you know, I, I think we're actually not that bad. We just don't know how to win. And we're, we're beating ourselves. So uh, Sacramento State is another opponent. They're in the Big Sky. The Big Sky is a great conference and we respect everybody in it. They're a state rivalry game. Uh, it's an FCS game within the state of California, and so will the UC Davis 1B. So we're looking forward to being state champions in the state of California. Coach, tell me about the bus ride home uh, after that game. Uh, it's a long bus ride after a loss. Well, I mean, I, you know, no, to be honest with you, I didn't think much about the bus ride. I was thinking a lot about the opportunities probably that we haven't taken advantage of, especially the last three weeks. And the, the, those uh, 12 hours probably gave a lot of us the opportunity to reflect on exactly where we are and why we are where we are and what we can do to fix it. And the reality of the situation, it's, it's in our hands to fix. And it's been uh, unfortunate that we're, we, we are where we are. But we, like I've said before, we're going to take ownership of where we are. We've done it. And I'm not too sure that the opponents we've played have had a lot to do with it. Uh, I will say this. I have never seen three fumbles bounce so spectacularly well that the other team can pick them up and run them for touchdowns. So the fumbles are fumbles, I get it. But the bounces were a little unlucky. <laughs> you know, and that's unfortunate, but it's a fact of the game. And it happened, and the disbelief of that is, is pretty tough. But the reality of the situation is we fumbled the football that many times and gave them the opportunity to do the things that they did. So you know, we take, we're going to take ownership of where we are. We're going to take ownership of the good things we have accomplished. And I think we're getting better on defense, and obviously we're pretty good on offense. You talked, you said for whatever reason, obviously the last two or three games, you guys probably have had more turnovers than all of last year. Um, can you tell me a little bit about maybe what contributes to that? Well, but if I could explain that, I'd, I'd probably tell you right now. But the reality of the situation is we have had 12 fumbles in two weeks. And we had, I think, 12 in the entire year in 2014. And, uh, you know, I think we have some guys that are definitely giving us tremendous effort. I think they made two pretty good calls and one absolutely great play on a bubble screen. The guy made an absolutely fantastic play on it. Uh, and, and they also had a good call on that one. And one other one, I think they beat us with a call too, to be honest with you. But that's not an excuse for the ball being on the ground. That's just the fact that they made a good call and probably out executed us. So in that fact, we got to be good with taking a two or three yard loss, but having possession of the football still. Uh, the other ones, I think, were effort. I think we were just flat effort fumbles. And uh, we, uh, we have we had the opportunity, I think, a little bit to observe film and watch guys get a little sloppy with the ball, trying to do a little too much, trying to make that extra yard and getting the ball out in front of them. When the ball gets out in front of you, it becomes exposed. And when the ball gets exposed, bad things can happen. And that happened a couple of times as well. So um, there's some things we can clean up. Uh, the one thing I don't want to change is our effort. I just want our uh, attitude to be the number one priority of our offense is to have possession of the football. Next two games are against California teams in the big sky. 
uh, kind of the, you know, California bragging rights. Is that a motivator for your team, do you feel like? Well, I think, you know, since really all three of us, Sacramento State, UC Davis, and ourselves, recruit the state of California primarily, you know, I mean, Davis and ourselves are going to pretty much recruit the same type of guy. So I think, you know, the winning and having the opportunity to beat each other, I think, has a little bit to do with it. But I think, uh, you know, overall, I think hopefully you can overall look at the program, look at the university itself, and, and hopefully more young people say Cal Poly is a place for me than the other two places. But it's a part of it. But I think most importantly for us, I mean, it's the opportunity to finish the season strong. Uh, and if we're going to have the woulda, coulda, shouldas at the end of the year, have the opportunity to, to make those woulda, coulda, shouldas valid by winning out. Health situation, last three games of the year coming up. Um, I know there's a lot of guys dinged up, especially uh, Brown and Prothrow. Can you talk about where they're well, at? I just think that, you know, health-wise, there's a lot of teams. I heard Joe say the same thing. The difference is, you know, for Joe, is guys seem to heal a little bit better when you get to game one. When you're in game eight and, and, and you're a little banged up, it's a little bit tougher to practice. It's a little bit tougher to get your body going. So guys are having a tougher time because they only have two or three days before they have to go try to do it again. And, uh, you know, Joe Prothrow, for example, has pushed that hamstring hard and tried to play against Portland State and re-injured it. Uh, so we're making sure that if we get him back for three games, it'd be great. If we get him back for two games, it'd be great. We're going to make sure that he's healthy when we do play him. Chris Brown will play. I mean, you know, I mean, he knows he's got three games left to go, and uh, his body has taken a beating over the last couple of years. But he's a tremendous competitor, and he showed that again last Saturday with the effort that he gave, and uh, I think our entire team gave. To be honest, we were down 27 to 10 because of two fumbles, and a lot of people was, oh, they're done. And then it's 33 to 31, and we're moving the ball, and then we fumble again. You know, but uh, I think, and then we came back again, to be honest with you. So there's a lot of guys on our team that are banged up, but I think the bottom line, I think what I'm trying to say is, I think our guys are going to play hard, and I think the guys that can do anything are going to do everything they possibly can to win the game, regardless of their health. If I remember correctly, the other big Sky teams had not really scored against Southern Utah until you went in there and you scored, what, 37? They hadn't given up a touchdown in four big Sky games. They'd given up, I think, a total of six points. They averaged 89 yards a game rushing as an average, and we had 500 and something yards rushing. We had 37 points, and we gave away probably another opportunity for 21 to 28 points ourselves. You know, and that's on us. And uh, you know, I, I build that game as their rushing defense against our rushing offense. Well, we won statistically. But unfortunately, the turnovers that either they caused or we caused gave them the opportunity to win the game. And it looks 54 to 37. That wasn't the game. If you were at that game, you probably, if you watched the game on film, you'd probably say we won. <laughs> you know, you'd probably say, how'd they lose that game? We had 35 first downs and lost. If you would have told me where, where we are offensively as far as time of possession, first downs, rushing yards, scoring average, and all those things right now, I would have thought we were in first place in the big sky right now. That's what I would have told you at the beginning of the year. If we could have these numbers, but it shows you that statistics have a lot to do with the game. But you can't afford to make six or seven mistakes a game that cost you games, and that's pretty much what we've done. What do you expect from Sacramento State Saturday night? Well, they're always an athletic team, and I think they're going to be athletic and uh, excited to play us. Uh, they're, they're coming off a win and a bye and a bye to prepare for us, so they're going to probably be healthy as they've been in, uh, in uh, probably the, the entire season. The bye to prepare for what we do offensively, usually, like I've said before, is an advantage. Uh, so they have a lot of advantages coming down here, and I think that you know they're probably saying that we're a frustrated team right now, which we might be a little bit. But based on practice today, I was really proud of the way the players came out and the spirit that they had, and I'm expecting them to come out like Mustangs on Saturday night and play with a great spirit and a lot of energy at home and get back on the winning track against Sacramento State. But I'm sure Sacramento State and their head coach is saying the exact same thing to them. Thank you. Great. Thanks.